welcome. I'm Cindy Lincecombe, the 103rd SAME National President. For Black History Month, the Society of American Military Engineers celebrates and honors the achievements and contributions of African Americans in the military engineering and the AEC professions. That is why I'm so pleased to kick off this month with a fireside chat with none other than Brigadier General Antoinette Gant, commander of the United States Army Corps of Engineers, South Pacific Division. General Gant is responsible for a portfolio of water resource development, military, interagency design and construction, spread across four districts, valued at more than $16 billion. Additionally, General Gant has the distinction of being the first African-American female active duty engineer to be promoted to the rank of general officer. General Grant, I am so honored to have this opportunity to talk with you today. Thank you for joining us. Cindy, thank you so much for uh, this opportunity. And I just think it's awesome what the Society of American Military Engineers does and the fact that you are celebrating Black History Month. So thank you. Thank you, thank you. So first and foremost, before we begin, General Gant, I hope you and your family are safe during these devastating storms that are hitting California. I also understand and truly appreciate the focused efforts of the South Pacific Division in providing you know, their services to the communities that are struggling throughout California. Yep, yeah, you know, the, the Corps has got this history where we are always very proud to be able to work with our local and state and also our federal partners to help respond to disasters like what's happening here with the atmospheric rains in, in California. Um, we've activate, activated our emergency operation centers in three of our, our districts, which are the three that are here in California. And we were closely in, in working with the state and FEMA uh, to support the response that's required. Um, the good news is that our dams are working as they are supposed to be. And that's, I mean, that's very good for us to be able to hear. Um, you know, we just continue to monitor those and we lean forward and offering support where we can. Um, a few minutes ago, we were talking about severe drought. And now we were talking about the fact that we have flood conditions. So that just says that our projects are adapting and have a means of being able to respond respond to the dramatic changes that we are actually seeing in our climate today. So very happy to be able to do that. Oh, yes, we truly appreciate that. So um, coincidentally, I am in Houston today traveling to meet with our local post here. I'm only about five miles away from one of the most famous HPCUs in Texas, Prairie View a and um, That's your alma mater, I understand. Yes. So, Recently, I believe you returned to Prairie View for your promotion ceremony to Brigadier General. Can you share with us maybe what that career journey has been like? Oh, my God. Well, being that you are five miles away from, um, yes, we say PV produces productive people. Um, and it is one of the highlights of my life to be able to have gone to, to that university. Um, and to answer your question, um, being a member of the, the Prairie View Society or alumni is simply amazing. Um, and the journey that it has, has transformed into, I'll tell you that, you know, Prairie View really prepared me for much of what I have had to deal with throughout my career. And um, I am just simply, simply happy to be able to have had the, the opportunities that I did there to learn and to grow. Um, you know, from there going on and, and getting my commission and then spending now 28 years in the military, something of which I never thought would happen. Um, it was always four years and I'm out. I, I got a civilian job on the other side, but um, to be able to actually be a part of a profession where each and every day we do something that has impact to the communities of which we serve, to our nation. Um, it's not just about being deployed, it's about being here in the United States and knowing that we're adding value. Um, and this journey is one that I could have never scripted myself. And sometimes I, I say, am I in a movie or is this real? <laughs> that is great. Well, we certainly appreciate your service. I know. Um, I'm not in the service. My father was in the Army, so I had 30 years of being a spoiled Army brat, but um, I truly appreciate everything you've done in that. 
And I know you've held a variety of command and staff positions serving both in Afghanistan and Kuwait, as well as stateside. Um, I'd like to ask, how have your previous positions influenced your approach to leadership and mentoring those next set of leaders? Cindy, that's a really good question. You know, I always say that we've got to watch and we've got to learn from all that we have the opportunity to be able to serve with. And um, that has really been the pinnacle for me. Um, the more re removed you get, the higher you get, the more removed you are as to what's really happening on the ground. And so I think it's important for us to always be able to listen. Um, most importantly, I would say that you always have to be yourself. Leaders, as well as those that we lead, are looking for you to be your authentic self, not trying to emulate everybody that you actually see. Of course, it's it's important that you take elements or nuggets from what you actually see to enhance yourself as a leader. But for me, it's just being who I am, um, allowing people to know how much I truly care for them and I want them to grow. Um, I am where I am because leaders trusted me. Uh, they empowered me. Uh, to help to make decisions and mostly they invested in me they gave me an opportunity when i never thought that opportunity could actually be there and i also know that when i made mistakes they were right there with me they showed the empathy that is needed to understand that hey you may may, may have made a mistake but it's okay and you can get up and you can make things just that much better Yes, I truly I believe that I know I'm I would not be on my SME journey or even um, in my professional career without those that had championed along with me. So I understand that another major influence of our leadership philosophy philosophy is um, those that have served as mentors to us along the way. I've had the pleasure of um, listening to you previously speak about the impact your mother's had on you. And I even recall you mentioning um, a student of your mom who maybe introduced you to the civil engineering field. Do you mind sharing a little with us about how she helped you and guide you along your path? Yeah, I, I'll first say, I mean, from the first of influence, it would be my, my parents. You know, both of them were teachers. Um, my mom taught science, my dad taught history, but they were very involved in the community. And this one student that we're talking about um, was a, a was at what my mother taught her, I think, in high school. And so one day we're having this conversation. We're at this program called Upward Bound, and she's talking about her career journey, just starting off in her career and what she did as a civil engineer for so long, especially my last few years of high school. I wasn't sure exactly what I wanted to do. I knew I was good in math and science. I um knew that I wanted to, at that time, I kept saying I wanted to be a chemist. Um, but when she talked about what civil engineers do, what the profession was all about, and the fact that it could have impacts on communities. Um, and I was just thinking about my small community, not thinking I would, you know, go, I would go away and come back. And I was like, man, this could be a big deal. And so, you know, I, I looked to follow in her footsteps. And lo and behold, she is a a employee with the Corps of Engineers. She works as the exec, one of the associate directors of the Engineering Research Development Center in Vicksburg, Mississippi. So there she is still making an impact. Um, and every day I get to tell people about how just hearing that one story allowed me to, to want to actually, you know, follow in her footsteps and be on that journey. Absolutely. I think um, our journeys and those that influence us, sometimes we don't even realize they're going to be key influencers along yes. the way, right? Yeah. Um, and I recently had the pleasure of facilitating and um, hearing you speak at the Sacramento Post Women in STEM panel. That was dynamic with all your district commanders. I greatly appreciate that again for the society. But what would you like to say to the students who are thinking about getting involved in the STEM or the engineering profession? Well, I first I would say is that we can never have enough engineers, <laughs> no matter what we do. Um, this is a profession that we we really need uh, more and more of. And it's wide open. You know, it, it needs more people like those um, all around. I mean, of all different walks of life. And I have started now saying that it's not just about STEM, but it's STEAM. So we add the A in there for art. And because all of it is about innovation, it's about solving complex problems. It's about just making the world a better place. 
STEAM actually transforms our society. If you think about it, I mean, science, technology, engineering, arts, and math, they all have something to do with how we as a society has transformed. I was thinking about this the other day and I said, it was less than 50 years ago, we went from a floppy disk to a thumb drive and to now we're in the cloud. And all of this has to do with STEAM. Uh, you know, there's a mathematical equation behind what we're doing. It's technology that actually makes that work. Um, thinking about the science um, standpoint of it and engineering to, to make it happen. And then of course the, the arts. Arts transform um, much of what we actually do and has a history behind it that, that helps to, to make us that much better. I also think about us at the Corps of Engineers and how we're talking about climate change or climate resiliency and how, again, all of these elements, um, we are able to look at designs that are nature-based features to allow us to still be able to do the work that we need to, to have done, but do it in a way where it's not changing uh, our, our, our areas of which we're working, but really using the environment to make it better. That, that's true. You know, I think um, with the society, we really work hard with our industry and our government engagement. And one of the signature events that we have is we have five national engineering construction camps that we host each year. And, you know, I've attended many of them and the students that are there are, they make me feel good. They tell me that, you know, there is a future. They are brilliant students that I'm so happy we're able to engage at these military facilities as we offer these camps with our industry members. And I would, um, you know, I would invite you, ma'am, that if you are ever in town during one of those camps and you happen to be at the location, um, it's, it's all in awe when you get to see these students. We'd like to invite you to stop by. I'm sure they'd love to see you, you know. Thank you. And, and you know, I mean, our future is bright, right? And and that's being able to, to see them and see them excited about um, the STEAM. It it just excites us to know that we're in good hands. We are, we are. Um, so as we celebrate Back History Month, um, we have, what are some? We always talk about who are the individuals that have inspired us to progress in our careers, whether in the military, in engineering, or maybe in your sorority, Alpha Kappa Alpha, or elsewhere, you know, I'd love to hear um, if you had those individuals that really inspired you along the way. Yeah, you know, there are, are so many um, that I could probably name, and, and some that are, which are not African-Americans, but as we celebrate Black History Month, you know, I have to start with my parents. You know, I saw it every day. My, as I talked about the fact that my parents were educators, but not only were they educators, but they were investors in the community. Um, I can remember us being the only house on the block with encyclopedias, and they welcomed the students in our community to be able to come on our street, to come into our home and be able to use uh, those encyclopedias because they didn't have them at the time. I can remember them actually bringing um, uh, others to actually come to come to uh, the, the job with them or, you know, picking them up. They might have missed the bus or something and being able to make sure that they had a ride to school. These are all things that are inspiring that, to me or what I consider to be the servant leader standpoint. And then when you look at the military, of course, you know, General and Secretary Colin Powell is someone that actually comes to mind, just watching and listening to his journey. I even got to meet um, uh, Secretary Powell, well, before he was Secretary Powell, when he came to our university, came to Prairie View for the inauguration of Lieutenant General Julius Becton, who was our president at the time. Julius Becton actually had the first prayer breakfast at Prairie View and asked me to be the speaker for as the commander for the cadet commander for the ROTC program. Um, and then, you know, some people don't might not even know this, but General Hugh Robinson was the first African American general in the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. He graduated from West Point and he also got his master's uh, from MIT um, in 1978 is when he actually became a, a brigadier general. So these are people that you know, sometimes, I mean, everybody knows about Colin Powell, but the Julius Becktons or the Hugh Robinson. Um, I even think about hidden figures in Katherine Johnson and Mary Jackson. Um, day two, I, I got had the opportunity to meet Ms. Katherine Johnson before she actually um, passed away in, in 2020. You know, reading about their stories, watching and, and, and learning about what they have done. 
really inspires me to continue my journey. Because it, we always say that if you see someone that looks like you, it just gives you that much motiva motivation to know that you too have the abilities to be able to reach the pinnacle levels of which these individuals have done. And so um, I'm just so thankful for, for everything that um, has had uh, for everything that I've had the opportunity to be able to do, but to have these individuals to be uh, someone that I could look up to um, as I maneuver through my career and just maneuver through life. Yep. Yep. There, are, I, I, when I was preparing our questions for you, I thought the same thing and I thought my list is endless. And I've realized too, some of my individuals that are still inspiring me now are young professionals, right? They just re-energize me and get me to think of beyond what um, the norm is for me. So I've enjoyed that along the way as well. Um, the the other thing that I would share as we were talking is that trying to really look at how can the AEC industry better integrate diversity, equity, inclusion efforts into its culture and what thoughts, how you would see that progressing. Um, Cindy, you know, I, I would start this off by saying that it, it just isn't AEC, the AEC community, but I think it's all of us that have to have to make this happen. Um, we have to become more intentional about our efforts. It's one thing to say that DEI is important, but there's another when our actions truly align with the words of which we're actually saying. You know, integration isn't about just isn't about lowering standards. And a lot of times you hear people say, well, you know, we're not getting the best and the brightest when we actually include diversity, equity and inclusion. And, and it's not. It's about opening doors and thinking differently. It's about ensuring that everybody has a seat at the table. Um, and it's you know, we can't be dismissive. Or, and we have to make sure that we're incorporating in ideas, no, regardless of where they're actually coming from. Right. Everybody, everything that we actually read talks about diverse teams and how having diverse teams um, makes us that much better. And I think the one thing that we have to understand that having a diverse team isn't about just a male or female or a gender or a race. It's about talking with individuals with uh, disabilities, it's about bringing people in from different cultures. I mean, there's so much that goes into diversity, but then making sure that we're inclusive of having them to be able to feel comfortable and giving their ideas and knowing that it's not just being heard, but it's being incorporated into what we do. And so as a AEC community, again, I go back to being intentional about making sure that we are doing that and being very um, inclusive, uh, no matter where our the, the thoughts and the ideas are coming from. I, I do love that. I think I love your statement about the seat at the table. You know, many times when I'm talking to individuals, it's like, if you're in the room, sit at the table, don't don't stand in the back of the wall. You know, you come to the table, join us in that. So I'm, I'm excited to have heard you share that. Um, within the society, you know, I've been a member for a long time, so I could answer this question for a long period of time. But you've also been a member of SAME for several years. And I, I love to learn and hear more about what have you valued about being a member of the society, both personally and professionally? Uh, it comes down to relationships. I have met so many amazing individuals by just the, the networking of, of people that I've had the opportunity to be able to, to meet, um, whether it's at the small business conference that's held every year, you know, in the November time form, frame, or even just the, the small ones, the regional ones that happen, even with the districts or just a, a semi event that's happening. Um, there are some really uh, amazing individuals out there. And to be able to sit down, listen to their story, offer their ideas, um, and then take those ideas and, and maybe even enhance them themselves. I think for the Corps of Engineers and SAMI, we've got an important partnership here. We're all about making sure that we are doing things that are better, not just for us as an organization, but also for um, the nation. And so each and every time that we actually get together and have the companies that are a part of SAMI, as well as members of our organization um, come together as members of SAMI, I think it's a win-win for us all. And we, I always say that, you know, I won't necessarily wear the green suit forever. And so in knowing that, um, it's great to be able to know that I've got lifelong friends that I can be able to talk to in regards to other things that may 
uh, come avail even after uh, my time in service. Absolutely. And, uh, and we certainly value both our, our military members that are in service as well as those that have retired and become industry partners with us now working for the industry. So um, one of the things I, I pride myself in under my term just is um, our listening sessions. We're working with the core because I believe it's what, what difference do we make in our communities, right? And with the core districts located throughout the United States and us being able to partner together is a great, a great opportunity to support those, those national infrastructures locally. Yes. So ma'am, um, it has definitely been my privilege speaking with you today. I am confident that your achievements, both past and your future ones, will be an inspiration to African-American kids, teens, young adults, young military leaders that we have. And I, I believe, you know, it's important for them to see themselves in you, your success, and to believe that anything is achievable. Um, you've, you've certainly shared some great insight. Um, you've been an inspiration to me personally. I've had that pleasure since we've talked. You've coached me a few times. And um, but you've also been an inspiration, not only in the military, but to industry members, to our society. Do you have any clothing thoughts you'd like to share? Cindy, first, let me just say thank you for allowing me this opportunity to be able to sit down and chat with you. And um, your words that you have just spoken are, are very, very kind. You know, a lot of times no one actually seeks out to, to be a leader. It just sometimes happens. But I think the most important thing that we have to understand is that as we are leaders, leaders are put in position not to develop followers, but to develop more leaders. Because even as we continue to become seasoned in, in what we actually do, we want to make sure that the next generation continues to carry on. Um, you know, I think we have to remember that we only have one life. And in this life that we we live, we have to make sure that we are truly enjoying it, but we are doing something that is impactful. I always say it's not about us, but it's about those of, of which we are surrounding, helping to make them even better than what they see themselves, but also pushing ourselves. So it, it gives it's a it's a, a two way street here. And we have to always remember that as we continue to work together we can ensure that this world becomes a truly, truly better place. So we've all got a part to play in it. And we have to ask ourselves each and every day, what's your contribution and what are you going to do to help make and ensure that this nation continues to be the best that it can actually be? And I think we, as members of the STEAM Society, um, have the opportunity to be able to do that each and every day. Well, thank you. And I, my new word, I'm going to get that steam out there as we get going. But um, thank you again, General Gant, for taking the time to share your story with us today. I encourage our society members and the entire AEC community to watch this space and stay tuned for more featured members throughout the month as we honor and celebrate Black History Month. Thank you so much. Thank you. Happy Black History Month.